This episode does get spooky. After a certain point, I will tell you when to switch off. I nearly didn't put out this episode because I couldn't really explain some of the things that I came across and um, I did film a lot but I've decided to chop it out but um, there are some things I'm, going to, I'm still going to talk about though um, having had a few weeks to process all the things that went on um, this episode there are some spooky things that I encountered um, I can't explain them um, a few months ago I didn't even believe in this stuff but for the first half of this episode, I'll just show you some of the normal stuff that I do. And um, before, the things, before things get spooky, I'll give you a warning. And at that, at that point in time, if you want to switch off, um, feel free to do so. Because um, my intention is not to spook people out or give them things that are going to give them nightmares. But there is a redeeming factor to the end of the story if you listen all the way to the end. So at your own risk. The full job. Man, this place keeps getting more and more beautiful each time I come back. I mean, I've only been back for the second time. Of course, my main reason to come here was Chitya Darshan. I went with a, um, a new friend that I made. I filmed a lot, but like I said, things got weird, so I did trim a lot of stuff out. So along our journey, we stopped by in Jieshi in Puning and Hui Dong in Huizhou. Uh, both these places and multiple parts along the way, we did see a lot of Chi Tian Dashan temples. When we got to Fuzhou, uh, it didn't take me long before I found Uh, I was just taking a stroll with my friend uh, around Fuzhou. We went to a touristy place called Yantai and um, I looked to the opposite side of the river which was there and I was like, damn, that's Chi Tian Dashan and that's the temple I went to before. Uh, I ran across the street, I nearly fell into the water because I was that excited. So this is a little bit hard for me to explain but you can see all the lights and how glorious this looks. But the opposite side of the temple is what is the Yantai shopping complex uh, or I, don't, I think that's what it's called. Um, uh, no matter where you stand on that side, you can't miss the temple. You can actually see it from there. But I don't have the right lenses and equipment to do landscape scenery. So uh, maybe another time. A lot of people had been sending me messages after the, the last episode in Fuzhou. Uh, asking me how to, is there a way to get to the temple and how can I get to the temple it's literally 30 minutes taxi from Fuzhou Nan station so if you really felt like visiting you could fly into Fuzhou or you could take a train to Fuzhou and 30 minutes down and if you are there definitely take a walk to Sanfang Qishan I, I, I will put these names in the description I, I'm not pronouncing them that well but Sanfang Qishan is a really romantic uh, place where it's literally 30 minutes walk from the temple. So, there's a lot, I mean, I, I'm sorry I didn't film much there, but hey, uh, this channel is not about that. It's not really a travel vlog. If you want me to do that, then put that in the comments and I will start doing that. So what happened next? Uh, Re-entering the Darshan temple was a really big moment because um, a lot of the staff there had met me before, obviously, and they still remembered me and some of them were new and they just happened to see my video on uh, Bilibili or Yoku uh, I think it was Bilibili because uh, of course China doesn't really have what well, China doesn't have YouTube so that was a, uh, a nice moment uh, that I shared with some of the locals <laughs> made me feel like hey I started this channel not with the purpose of monetization or or a fan club uh, just to really share my findings but the fact that a lot of people had been moved by these findings made me quite happy um, so uh, eventually I ended up uh, celebrating um, Chinese New Year with uh, with these guys 
这个我就我吗？没有。哦。I call him Darker, means a big brother. He kind of runs the temple. I found myself a job. Uh, a voluntary job that I can put on my CV. I'm just joking, but you know what I mean. There's the normal stuff. Um, this is where things get a little bit weird. Listen if you can. Um, if you are easy to spook out, um, feel free to stop watching now. Please don't blame me for what I'm about to tell you. Um, I had to think this through a lot and eventually I've got to this place where um, eventually I decided I'd rather share because how the story ends up is it's quite nice and it, it made me feel stronger about myself. So back to the friend I was traveling with. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show many clips from him or show his face because um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's too appropriate. But when I first met this guy, he's, he had a very strong obs obsession with magic. Um, I'd, I didn't believe in magic before. Um, I still question if I do. Um, but of course, since the time of meeting him, my eyes became open to a lot of other things, especially um, black magic. Uh, a lot of people talked about this, that, but I've simply just ignored it in the past because I just didn't think much of it. Um, but yeah, he kept talking a lot about magic and he was, um, he was part of a um, Chidi and Darshan magic group. Um, they, they practice th basically something like superpowers. And um, I did see some weird stuff, to be honest. Um, related to uh, levitation and lifting. I, but I still haven't processed whether what I saw was right or wrong, so I just don't want to talk about that part too much. Um, but he did tell me that a lot of people come to train Chidi and Darshan magic. But this is not the strange thing. Um, I just, uh, of course, I'm obsessed with monkey culture and uh, Monkey, monkey related really, stories, um, Chidi and Dasha and Sul Kong, Hanuman. He's really interested in magic. And we, we, we became friends, we were like uh, RRR. Now, this is what got strange for me. A lot of Indians, Sri Lankans and Southeast Asians, um, a lot of us, especially who are brought up in the Sampradaya, Sampradayas or uh, religious sects, religious divisions, related to Hanuman or Rama, they chant a mantra called the Hanuman Chalisa. I was introduced to this mantra several years ago, maybe when I was 16, something like that. And uh, I like the sound of the mantra, so I started learning it and uh, I just, I would listen to it because I don't understand Awadi, which is the, it's a, it's a dialect of Hindi, which is the language the mantra is written in. But I was listening to it every day and eventually I became used to the words somehow and I could actually chant it and by this point in time it became a thing that I did every morning which I would when I woke up I would whisper to, my, to myself I would do the Hanuman Chalisa and uh, I would just feel that the sounds made me feel empowered and every time I saw a, a statue of Hanuman or Chidi and Dashan uh, it was also normal for me to do that. Um, of course in many temples I'd asked um, even Taoist and Taoist temples I'd asked is there any mantra for Chiti and Dashan or Sun Wukong? Because uh, I'd like to share, share that with, with you guys, um, with you guys, the YouTubers who follow me doing this research. But um, they didn't actually say anything. They just said, uh, there is no real mantra. You can think of Guan Yin Busa um, uh, and say, Na Mo Guan Shi Yin Pu Sa, which is a mantra. But there is generally no mantra for Chiti and Dashan. So Hanuman Chalisa became my norm and I'd, oh, I'd been doing this for a long time. I had no issue. Now my friend who came with me, 
Um, I noticed that every time I did this Hanuman Chalisa, there was a little bit of agitation in him. Um, the first time he heard it, he felt really happy and empowered. He said, bro, when you see... Well, he's, he, he had a Chinese accent, but I'm just translating into my version of enthusiasm. He was like, bro, when I hear you sing this, I feel just this energy inside me. Like, you should use this to like, you know, you could use this for magic, you know? And I was like, okay, no interest in magic, but it makes you feel happy. If it makes you feel happy, that's good, man. And um, yeah, but the next few times I started chanting it, there was some agitation in him. Um, I couldn't quite place why. Especially in the temple when I would whisper it to myself, he would kind of uh, try to interrupt me or stop me uh, or say, don't, don't, don't do that here. And some mornings when I wake up uh, and I was doing that, he would try his best to interrupt us and take us out. Some temples we went to, he had a bit of hesitation of coming in. He'd say the energy is like really blocking him because uh, he's energy sensitive and he said that the temple had a negative energy. I can't sense energy. I don't really know what that means. But when I look at a place and it looks beautiful, I want to go inside. And when he... Uh, but anyway, after the big Chidi and Dashan temple, we went there as I did Hanuman Chalisa again. And I, hope, I was hoping he didn't notice. Uh, when we got back that night, um, he got really sick. Um, he was vomiting everywhere and like uh, shaking and um, really, 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 really ill. And um, I was trying my best to take care of him, uh, but nothing was available. I did notice that sometimes he spoke like a different person and I was wondering whether he had multiple personalities. Um, I mean, I've seen it in movies like Fight Club, but I didn't really think uh, I'd meet somebody who had this. But um, I, I don't know if that's true. I didn't know that if that's true. The next whole day he lay in bed, but he didn't want me to stay there and he didn't want me to chant. He kind of, I said, bro, did you know that some people believe Haraman Chalisa can cure your illnesses? Um, do you want me to chant that? And he said, literally said, no, 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 no. And he got me out, um, he's like, go for a walk, uh, you know, and he, he got me a taxi to a nice place. And uh, yeah, it was strange. The next day, um, he kind of did a runner and left. Um, in a hurry, uh, said he had to go, something happened to his family. And I was like, what happened, bro? Is everything okay? It's like, no, everything's fine. And he, he kind of panicked and just left. Um, and I was, I wasn't really sure what happened. But anyway, the next few days went by and I eventually returned here. And um, then I found out from a mutual friend that he'd, he'd actually told a, a mutual friend that, let me read this that he felt like every time I read, every time I recited the Hanuman Chalisa, he felt like his soul was being sucked out of his body and leave, left him uh, energyless for the rest of the day. And remember how I mentioned he said he was sensitive to energy. He said that when I recited the Hanuman Chalisa, he could feel the presence. I can't believe I'm, I'm saying this, but anyway, he, he felt that he could sense multiple monkey spirits that didn't want to do any good to him as in evil spirits being conjured up to attack him and that he even had a nightmare that an army was trying to was chasing him and trying to kill him and rip him apart i was like i've never heard of the hanuman chalisa in the context of evil but go on he was saying this thing that I was like, oh, Hanuman Chalice is being used to suck out my soul. He, he felt that I was sucking out his soul, but he didn't think I was doing it intentionally. He didn't think I was evil, but it was leaving him that way. Eventually, when I got back here, um, I couldn't get in contact with him, but I did know his uh, partner. So uh, we met up with this partner and uh, asked, is he all right? Um, I kind of lightly mentioned, do you ever notice that he kind of feels split personality sometimes? And the partner literally, um, the partner is a practicing Buddhist and she literally turned to me and said, my partner is possessed by demons. He's got not just one or two, but quite a few. And I was shocked. And, she, and, um, and I said, how do you know? And she said, uh, a Buddhist seer, I think her Sifu, um, had confirmed this. 
and um, he had picked this up on one of his magical spell activities at some point and um, so what had actually happened is by me reciting the chalisa I had been involuntarily exorcising my friend of these ghosts I'd been living with a ghost I'd been staying with somebody who was possessed by a ghost I'd literally been exorcising my friend against his will and I didn't even know about it and all I had been doing is mumbling in a language I didn't even know whispering it to myself and this caused him that level of agitation thing is when I heard this I wasn't scared I, I kind of felt protected because the same Buddhist seer also had a look at me and said I would have also I could also have serious problems but something I'm doing in my daily life is keeping me protected from those from those same spirits I said I kind of only just know Hanuman Chalisa I might chant a few other times but yeah, and they said they just said keep doing that do that more even so whoa okay so I took some time to really understand this because the Hanuman Chalisa has got verses in there that talk about various things like um, ghosts, demons and spirits. Um, it, there is a, literally a line in the Hanuman Chalisa that says uh, Forgive my pronunciation because Awadi is not my first language. Um, this line literally means demons, ghosts and spirits are literally terrified of the name of Hanuman. So just by reciting this mantra, uh, none, of the, none of their work can be effective. <clears throat> so I looked this up online, I can read this, but I think you, you're welcome to do your own research because at the end of the day, I'm not an expert, I can only share. But um, if you have any comments, you can also drop it down in the comment section below. But this mantra has been credited with stuff like health repair because um, Hanuman did uh, cure like the uncurable. Um, and that's mentioned in this mantra uh, balancing your bad karma fixing your astrological bad times it's also used for manifesting pure energy and well-being and then the other thing that's mentioned is literally black magic and exorcisms then I did a bit more digging in and I found that I found videos of people doing exorcisms with just the Hanuman Chalisa another thing that it brought to my mind was when I met his um, Chidian Dasha and Magic C4. He did actually tell me that rather than me being a filmmaker, he told me that I would be great at being an exorcist. And I thought, why? I didn't know why he said that and I found that strange because at the time he told me that I didn't believe in ghosts or demons or magic or black magic even. But for some reason he said that to me and that just made me think. And I'm sharing my observation and as I told you at the beginning of this video, I almost didn't want to put this video out but uh, I know uh, this channel is taking a turn from just cultural exploration to something that I cannot explain yet but I felt like you know you guys are coming with me on this journey if you're following my channel so this is where my journey is I can't explain a lot of things I'm not that wise but if you have anything to say do politely share in the comment section below if you like the research that I'm doing and there's lots more monkey temples out there around the world please give me a subscribe because that's the only way I know that if people are actually enjoying this research then I would like to know and then if I know I can keep doing it after I came back from that trip I did feel more empowered by the Hanuman Chalisa decided to do a few tracks so you can check them out on my channel I know my voice is quite rubbish but hey I'm sure some people would enjoy it so give it a go I've also got the English translation on the same videos so 